This video is brought to you by the Abbey Community School Society. All right, welcome back. We are finally on the last video. In this video, we're going to take everything we've made, throw it all together, and hopefully have a working game. So let's get started. Um, I'm gonna start by creating a 2D scene. Uh, this is the only time I'll do this. Other times, it's usually more specific on what I want to create. I'm going to rename it and call this game. Okay, now, what's cool about Godot is you can take other scenes and make them children of this scene. But before we do that, let's actually add the background. So I'm gonna right click, add child node, look for sprite, there's our sprite. I'm going to go over to the texture part of the sprite, click load, go to my um, game and double click the background and it's in there. In this one, I, do want to, I don't want the off offset to be centered, so I'm gonna disable the centered. There you go, the background is nicely placed. Last thing, let's just rename this to be background. Good. Now I'm going to go back up to my uh, game node and I'm going to click this instance is seen as a node. So what this is doing, it's going to take those other scenes like the bird and ground and pipes and we can put those into this scene. So I'm going to click this, but make sure you have game selected up here. I'm going to start with the bird. Double click the bird and let's just drag into the middle. There we go. So just like that, we've got the bird added. Let's click back up on this on the game again. Let's click the instance is scene file as a node and let's add the ground. So there's our ground. I'm going to drag this down here. And um, so one of the cool things about this is I can try and drag it and place it in position or I can know its exact position that it needs to be at. And do we know that position? Well, I think we do. Um, if you guys remember, our, the height of our game is 600. The ground itself is 120 pixels high. So if we place it 480 pixels in the Y direction, then it'll be in the right height. And in the X direction, I think we just wanna place it at zero. And there we go. So the ground is perfectly placed. Now, I wanna add a second ground. Um, we need two grounds for this to work. So I'm gonna go and click here, click the little link again, add another ground, open, same thing, I'm gonna also transform it. So I'm gonna go down to transform, set the position the Y to be 480, and then set the X position to be 400. And this puts it right next to my other ground. So what's gonna happen is these two grounds are gonna move across the screen really nicely. When one gets off the screen, it'll disappear and jump over to the other side of the, the next ground and this will just keep happening. And I believe they should be nicely matched up too. Okay, so that's good. So I've got my ground, I've got my bird. Now we just need to add all the pipes. So I'm gonna go up here again, link, pipe. There's one pipe. Let's just throw it somewhere like so. It's too high, let's just go like this. I made this gap really huge. I might have to go back and change that. But the cool thing is because these are all linked, as you change one, it will change everywhere where it's being used. Back to game. Let's just add a few more of these pipes. Make sure you select game every time you attach something new. Uh, let's just maybe do one more. Let's see how that works. This is the part of the game where you really get to uh, play around with it and experiment with different positioning and things. Okay, so I've got all these. Um, so I've got my grounds, I've got my pipes, I've got my bird. How do we know how many points we have? So let's, we need to somehow keep track of score. So I'm gonna go and um, Create a label, so let's create a label. So I'm gonna to go to game, add a child node. We're just gonna look for a rich text label, just like before. And um, let's change it, let's rename it to score. And I wanna place it in the middle, so let's just place it in the very middle. 
So I'm going to set a value of zero to start. And of course, we need to set the sprites. So I'm going to scroll down to custom fonts here, normal font, and we're going to load in our font. Can I see it? Oh, I can't see it. Okay. So that's just some kind of bug. Okay. So I don't know if this was, if I said this by accident or what, but make sure scroll active is not turned on. You can just have it kind of like that. Make sure it's actually a big enough box to contain all the text. Place in the middle. Good, so we've got our score. And then finally, we need to add the pop-up. So let's go up here again, link, pop-up, and pop-up is added. We don't have to do anything to this pop-up. It's not visible. Um, we can test it, though, if I click this. Yeah, it shows up, and you can see that's what it looks like. Um, I don't know why that thing is there again so it looks like another scro scroll bar if it stays like that in the game we can go back and change it so let's save this scene for now so Control s to save i'm going to go to my uh, game folder and click save okay so this is all good now there's some things that we still need to do one of them is that um, i need to set it so that when the bird touches one of these score goes up so how can we do that um, we can do the following. So I'm going to go to my bird, go to the node and area entered. What, what you can do here is if you, the, we're going to signal, the bird's going to signal itself that when it enters one of these areas, it needs to do something. So let's attach this to the bird script, connect. There we go. So now our bird script has this new function on bird area entered. So this will trigger any time the bird enters a 2D area, which could be ground, could be pipe, or could be the point area between the pipes. So what we need to do is we need to check to see what did it just enter. So we can do a check to do that by, you can go if area dot name, area comes from what area you just hit and dot name will tell us the name of it. So if that name is equal to, um, we need to double check here. So let's just load up the pipes scene. And if I look at it in 2D mode, the section here, this is called the point area. So let's go back to scripting. Let's go back to bird. So if that is called point area, that's the specific name that I gave it then we can do something. So we can increase our points by one. So points plus equals one. And then we can uh, set our points in the level. So how do we have access to the points? Well, let's go back to our game. Here's our bird and here's our score. How can we access it? Well, we can use that dollar sign again. But if, if I do the dollar sign, the only things I'm really accessing here are the things on the bird. But there's a cool trick that you can do. If you do a dot dot dash, it actually steps you back from the bird. So now we're starting at the game and looking downwards from the game. So from the game, there should be something called score. And they'll access this node that's called the score. And from here, we can set its text to be equal to um, string points. Uh, points is an integer. You can't just print an integer to a text field. You need to change it into a string first. Strings are basically what text and sentences are called in programming. And this function turns the integer into a string, and then you can pass it into the text field. But what if the area that you hit wasn't a uh, point area? What if it was something else? Well, then we need to end the game. So the way we do that is we get tree. So that gets this top parent object again, and then we need to set paused to be true. So we're basically pausing the game. Now remember, pausing will stop every object from functioning. 
but it will turn the pop-up on. So pop-up should pop into the screen at this point. Um, or sorry, it'll, it, not, it won't pop into the screen. It will start functioning at this point. Uh, next, we need to find that pop-up again. Just like that. Pop-up. And we need to call the pop-up function on it. So this is the part that pops it up. So this will enable the pop-up to function, to start processing things, but to actually show up on the screen, we need to call this here. So this just references the pop-up object or node, and then dot pop-up makes it pop up on the screen. And last thing we need to do is we need to play our sound. So we're gonna do sound collision dot play. Save the script. You can quickly just scan all of our scripts. Everything looks good. Go back to the main view here. All right, so now that everything is set up, let's actually test it. So to test the game, you need to make sure the game uh, scene file is selected and then go over and press the play scene button. Perfect, so the bird is flying and flapping its wings. Pipes are moving, ground is moving. There's quite a bit gap between there, so maybe we'll fix that later. Yeah, the gap is still there, so we'll have to fix that. Let's see what happens when I hit something. Okay, game over. So I see this little scroll bar here. Let's fix that. Restart button is here. Um, if I click it, game restarts. Perfect. Okay, so let's fix some errors. I'm noticing I'm also not hearing the sound, this, the game over sound. So let's try one more time. Yeah, there's no game over sound, so there's some things we need to fix. So let's fix them. So let's start. First, let's do the pipes. Um, I don't want a gap to be there, so I'm going to add one more pipe. So I'm going to go to game, link, uh, or instance child scene. Let's do another pipe. And let's just put this pipe somewhere over here. That's good. Um, I think the game is a little bit too easy, so let's fix that. So the way you can fix that is we can load up the pipe scene. So if I go over to my pipes and click on pipe scene, I should be able to select um, both sets of pipes and just bring them a little bit closer. So sprite top, hold down shift collider top, drag the move button, and just kind of drag them a little bit down. And then sprite bottom, um, sorry, click on sprite bottom, hold down the control key, collider bottom, press the move key again and move this up a little bit. And now if I save and go back to game, all my pipes came closer together. So that's good, that fixed that error. Or that, that just made the game too easy, so now we made it a bit harder. Let's move on. So the next thing that's broken is the, um, in the pop-up, I saw that restart, or game over had that weird looking thing next to it. So let's go up to pop-up scene. So I just loaded the pop-up scene over here. Here's the game over sign. And I remember it was, if I enable this, it was this scroll active. I want to turn this off so it doesn't have that active scroll bar. Moving on to the button, so this restart button. Um, you know what, it's okay. It, it doesn't look the greatest, but it's okay for this game. I'll just save the scene, so Control S to save it. Go back to game, save this as well. Oh, sorry, I need to hide the pop-up again. So let's go back to pop-up. Yeah, just make sure it's hidden. Save. Um, was there anything else that was broken? Oh, the sound. So the sound in the bird didn't play. To fix that, I need to go into my bird scene. So I just double click my bird.tscn. I'm gonna find the sound, that's the sound collision. And let's scroll down and see why it's not playing. So it's got the same settings as sound flap and we know sound flap works. And I have a suspicion that the reason it doesn't play is because we paused the game. And because we pause it, the bird becomes paused, which means all those things on the bird also become paused, which means the sound becomes paused. So I'm gonna go down here I'm, I'm going to change the, the mode from inherit to process. So I still want it to process even though the game is paused. Okay, so let's go back to, let's save. Go back to game and press this button again. There you go. So we heard the game over sound. It's just a clap, but it works. Restart. Oh, 
you just want to see the gap between the pipes that's fixed as well it is re looking really good like um i feel like the game is working as intended oh i just saw something let's just pause it there's a little crack between these grounds here um i can see a little uh, slit in the ground so let's fix that i think with fixing that we will have completely fixed the game or made it run perfectly so i'm just going to click the ground kind of zoom in and see if i can stretch it out a little bit i think i can go scale mode maybe yeah so all i'm doing is i i click the scale mode I went to the top left corner and kind of stretched a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing for this other pipe, or sorry, the ground too. And same thing, I kind of want to scale it a tiny bit, just like that. Let's do one last test run. And now there should be no gaps anywhere in the ground either, because it should overlap somewhere. Yeah, perfect, so that's it. So we've got everything built. Um, it was a lot of videos, a lot of time, but this is game design. It takes, you have to build everything yourself. You have to draw all the things unless you find an artist. You have to make all the sounds unless you find a so sound engineer. And then the code, you see how the code is done, how you th throw all these uh, nodes together and then make a game. It's a lot of problem solving. Um, if you're new to code, like this will be very, very complex for you and something very new. But uh, there are lots of coding videos on the internet, lots of videos to help you through. And um, yeah, I hope you really enjoyed my class. Um, I had a great time teaching it. Um, you can interact with me on the Google Classroom if you're in the Google Classroom. And if you have any questions, I'll try my best to answer them. And yeah, hopefully I'll be putting out more videos like this, making other games, and you guys can come and follow along as we build them. Thank you for watching.